Katarzyna or Kate started art at a pretty young age, and even though she didn't have anyone within her circle who was vested in arts, she and her siblings have been blessed with artistic gifts. Kate has a knack for learning and unlearning new things, and thought of a way to celebrate those learnings by sharing them with a wider audience. I am so eager to learn more about her techniques and picking up skills faster than the others. We're diving into how she knew she was ready to do full-time, the mindset that propelled her to push through with watercolor, key and actionable steps to create light in your landscapes, what her wild first layer is all about, and her advice on how to keep on learning when you feel like quitting. I'm so excited to have her today on Make More Art Podcast. Here's Katarzyna or Kate Kimsek. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Actually, I... Can't, you, can't even remember the day when I wasn't drawing or, or painting something. It's like I've been artistic for uh, almost all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recall uh, the moment in my early childhood when I saw uh, a girl from next door drawing something on the sidewalk. And I was so impressed by that drawing. It was a huge horse. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even think uh, before that it's possible to draw something like this and uh, in that scale and it's like it opened my imagination for so many possibilities and since then i actually uh, draw even more and exercise uh, a lot every day and the fun fact is uh, that uh, my family is not very artistic my mom is a teacher and my dad uh, works in the military uh, and even not having any uh, relatives that do art uh, we me and my sister somehow ended up creating art uh, through all our lives and right now I am a full-time artist my older sister is an illustrator and a younger sister is uh, studying to become a, a concept artist for game design so like wow. we don't know where it came from but mm -hmm. we are all uh, pretty creative uh, I guess my mom till now uh, tries to figure out what she did in our er early childhood so uh, we would be so creative. <laughs> I think uh, there's not much mystery to it. Probably you should you just have to give uh, a kid uh, crayons and a lot of paper and free time. Yes. Uh, your support maybe and like stress-free environment and uh, hopefully it will turn into something good That's one day. Very interesting story. I say that because normally there will be someone within the family, an uncle or an aunt who is very much into arts and that person will be so supportive, provide an environment for the child to grow up and be creative. But in your case, your mom is a teacher and normally in school they will have like arts and crafts, right? And probably your mom would ask you, but you said that the, there were really no influences uh, when it comes to art, and not in the family even was into arts. Uh, but yes, uh, just yeah. me and my sisters, and I can recall how I always admired my older sister when she was drawing. She's uh, two years older than me, uh -huh. and she seemed always like uh, a very, very talented person. And I can remember how I tried to. Uh, draw just as good as her uh, <laughs> and probably annoy a lot annoying yes. little sister i was <laughs> I'm she sure you want, uh, it. I'm wanted sure you to create it. something for herself and i was always copying it <laughs> uh, but i guess uh, this was my influence uh, her oh. art yeah uh, and later on uh, our parents always send us to some uh, classes and workshops in our hometown 
But those weren't really interesting, and I can't uh, honestly say I, I learned a lot. I just kept practicing, but it was quite boring, actually. It was always still life, and I was too young to always draw still lives. Uh, I wanted to do something else, like illustrations and maybe manga <laughs> or something like that. Wow. Uh, in my high school, I decided I wanted to study uh, interior design. So I went to uh, like le learn something new uh, on a course in Warsaw. It's a capital city of Poland. Yes. Uh, so every week I was driving there to uh, learn how to draw in perspective uh, and maybe Mm, find out some tips that I mm, didn't know, didn't find out uh, through all those years I was drawing by myself. Uh, and I learned a lot and that's where actually someone explained to me the basics of watercolor. Only the teacher uh, wasn't really a watercolor artist, he knew only some basics. Uh, but uh, like prefer to draw, not to paint. So that's only where I mm, discovered watercolors. And then uh, I am actually was uh, learning on my own uh, and through some videos on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really like to copy other people's works. I, I wanted it to be my own. So like I watched the videos, but then I tried to put those tips into use uh, in my own way. <laughs> and using my own favorite colors uh, like uh, it's also easier to share my own paintings on social media not uh, copies of other people's works so that was the one of the reasons and uh, i studied uh, architecture in warsaw uh, <laughs> after all not interior <laughs> design and i was pretty sure back then i would be an architect but here i am uh, working as a full artist full-time artist not an architect. Uh, it seems like uh, I was more destined to be uh, an artist and an art teacher than an architect. I f it feels more right for me just mm -hmm. like that. Thank you, Kate. Um, like what I said, I was just amazed when you said that you are all... So there's three of you um, siblings? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So yeah, and they are, so you have two sisters, and then they are also into arts, and wow, your parents would be so proud of um, having you as their daughters, and so, but different different uh, forms and genre of art, right? Yes. Your sister is um, an illustrator, and then the other one is more on graphic design, did you say? Yes, more on the computer and uh, concept art. Concept art, amazing. And... Um, <laughs> The funny story is that you both you want to try interior design, but end, ended up um, studying architecture. Is that right? And the, the, yes, yes. And the, that, and now a full time artist. Wow! Talk about like detours, and then finally arriving to your destination, which is being an artist. Sort of happened uh, by itself because I mm -hmm. uh, on the course that I was learning how to draw in perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. The man who uh, was a teacher there asked me to uh, be his assistant throughout uh, the years that I was studying architecture. So I was like uh, his first assistant uh, on the course. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I uh, learned how to teach, actually. Uh, and uh, after leaving uh, the university, I started to teach on my own uh, school, at my own school. That's, that's really great. We're going to touch and dive into more of the teaching part. When it comes to, so you, did you have any previous job prior to being a full-time artist? I ask that because normally people who are into arts, right? So when they graduate, they would either find like another job first. It's not really related to art, but then somehow, because this is the first love, they would go back to it. But in your case, it's also the same story or you had on straight art all the way. Well, I got, got the degree in architecture, but never really worked as an architect. I right away started to teach on my own, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not, uh, not yet as 
uh, as much uh, creating my own art and selling it as a professional artist, uh, just teaching. <laughs> so <laughs> I, it was full time, but not not being an artist, just being a teacher, actually. Uh, and uh, it happened again by itself because I was teaching others and creating works, uh, works of art while teaching and they started to pile up. <laughs> and, uh, so I opened a shop uh, on the internet, on Etsy, started to selling and it's sort of become another way of uh, getting income. So right now I am teaching uh, live and online and selling my art uh, on the web. Wow, a full-time artist. But interestingly, you started as a, an art teacher. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll touch on that in a bit because I know it's going to be a very interesting topic to discuss. Now, let's talk about um, the subjects and the style that you have. You did mention earlier, and I think it, it's, it's also, it will also resonate with our audience when you said that when you're starting out, you also did search the web. You watch videos online. Oh, yes. Um, you had a mentor, but not, not really a watercolor artist. So the web really helped. But one thing, one interesting that you also mentioned, Kate, was that you try not to copy it like brush stroke for brush stroke or an exact painting or output of the of whoever was demonstrating their skill online or on the web but you try to inject your own style and create an output that you said you're you're I'm not necessarily proud to put on social media, but did you call it your own? How did you come about with this style? Because I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And I always mention that in, in some of the interviews that I have with, with artists like yourself, because for most people, they would say, and this is probably um, a popular belief that some, or may, some people may or may not agree, but for others, they would recommend, and you can copy and then um, practice and practice, and then eventually your own style will come out of it. But in your case, you follow, but then if you try to inject something. Yes. That's you. If yeah. someone is okay with coping, I uh, think it's a great way to learn. Uh, uh -huh. Just maybe not post it on social media because you might uh, like annoy the artist. Point. That is a good <laughs> have uh, their uh, permission to use. Yeah. their work and copy it and share it on social media as if it was your own but mm -hmm. if you are copying just for yourself to learn uh, maybe in a sketchbook or something then it's totally okay and uh, a very good way to learn it's actually uh, pretty important to have as many teachers as possible i think because uh, otherwise you start to copy just one style uh, subconsciously like, yes, uh, yes. Not, not really knowing you are doing it you are doing it uh, if you are only learning from one uh, artist uh, it's really hard to find your own, own way of painting you should see how many many people do it and then try to use their uh, methods and tips and try to make it uh, your own somehow that's a good advice um kate because yeah, you're absolutely right. And I kind of noticed that as well with when I was starting out, I would follow like one artist, right? So I have several, but they are all somehow the same, like wet on wet, loose floral. So I was kind of following and their, their techniques are almost the same, but I've never really tried and ventured out into um, like learning from another artist who has an entirely different technique. So that is really good advice of try to learn from as many teachers as possible and then try to discover which of those you are most comfortable with and then eventually you will find your own style. And about posting social media, like what you said, that maybe if they are really, they do want to post and show their progress, maybe just give credit um, to, to the artist who... Sure. Uh, yes, credit. Credit will be good. <laughs> it will be good. I think that sometimes it's overlooked because I know you're pretty excited to share that. Hi, ah, I finally made a piece, right? So when you were starting out, you were you said that you watched the web, but then you know tried to make it your own by incorporating your own style and take on the, the technique. Was there a particular subject that you were really searching for, or was it like a plethora of different subjects? I was always the most impressed with the paintings where uh, an artist uh, was able to achieve like very mesmerizing lightning and colors. So 
if someone painted even a portrait that was like backlit or something like that with the hair that was yes. illuminated by light, I was like, wow, oh, how did he oh. do it? Okay. And I'm not really painting portraits, but uh, seeing how they do it uh, make it make it easier to paint like uh, backlit branches for me because I am more into landscapes right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that that explains a lot um, when you were, were fascinated with those artisan paintings that, you know, the, the light keeping, you know, seeping through the branches. And you mentioned hair um, when, when looking at portraits. It translates when I look at your roots now um, on, on your ground. And by the way, Always. those are amazing, amazing landscape. At some point, at one point, I thought, is this a photograph or is it really I have to like zoom in because I know there were some paintings where you painted from from a reference from a still photo but then I also saw videos of you like doing plein air like out and about and just you know dipping your brushes onto paint and just painting away um I, I set off light earlier when we were we were talking that I love two paintings of yours um they were actually uh posted side by side uh well, not side by side at least on the grid they are sitting side by side um one is the catching the last sun rays and then the other one is uh where all the peaceful thoughts if i'm not sure oh yes i'm proud of that one yeah i love it i love it um the first one catching all the, the last sun rays um if you guys would like to see what what painting that what paintings i'm talking about you can check out i'm going to drop in the link of um, Kate's Instagram account so that will be included in the show notes right? can you share a little bit more about that painting because I were, are, were those cows by the way um, yes those were cows that were like, lying um, in the grass yeah they were like having the sun bath of their life um, basking into the golden hour I was just like this is just feels so warm and inviting so can you share a little bit more about that piece about the cows about, the <laughs> no, about, about the art piece, about the art piece. I know it's part of an exhibit um, that was in, held in April, and then it's is it still ongoing May? Uh, it's in France. And uh, actually, those this was an international exhibition that was started in France, uh, <laughs> and there there was like hundreds of, of artists from all over the world. Yeah. Uh, pretty many of them were from Poland. Uh -huh. uh, and this actually was organized by uh, a famous uh, artist from um, Poland, Amin Dam. Uh, and he uh, organized like the second part of the exhibition that was taking place in uh, Warsaw as well okay. and in Lublin. So uh, I actually had uh, a chance to see the works of the greatest masters uh, live. So it was so, so good because Lublin is uh, very near to where I live right now. Yeah. Uh, it's really awesome. So my my work was only in France, and uh, the ones that traveled to Poland were the twenty, the best of the best of uh, all those hundreds of works. So <laughs> uh, one of uh, a light, lifetime opportunity to see them live. Yeah. yeah. So that particular painting that you did, how long did it take you? Because and I'm not sure what the size of that painting was. Okay, so it's like half imperial. It's uh, thirty-eight centimeters on on uh, fifty-six centimeters, uh, and I usually start to paint when the deadlines is coming. So <laughs> it took me like uh, uh, one night. <laughs> wow! I started uh, in the evening one day and finished it uh, uh, on the on the next day. So the first layer was uh, ready uh, in the evening. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have little kids, so it's not that easy to uh, find the time to paint. Okay, that, that, that's, what, that's just a little bit. Thank you for being honest with that. Um, I was thinking maybe I shouldn't have asked about how long it took you. And, but wow, when I look at Maybe that, uh, somewhere around 10 hours, I think, I if, I, if we sum things up. It was so good. I would just have to say, and when I saw that it's part of an exhibition, exhibition, it definitely should be in a gallery. Definitely. It's just so inviting. The color choices. Um, it's just so beautiful. Um, such a beautiful piece of art. And congratulations on that exhibit. Now, the other painting that I was talking about, um, it's 
I don't know which what type of green, probably use several um, shades or uh, colors of green for that painting. Um, were all the peaceful, what's the, the exact title? Um, the home of the home all peaceful of all thoughts. Peaceful thoughts. You are very good at naming your paintings, by the way. Um, Thank you. I was you. like, yeah, I was, I was going through some of the paintings. I was like, this is very witty. The way, um, the way that you're, you're giving titles to them, um, more than that, the painting is all. The paintings are so beautiful, but so is the titles. Is, they are very fitting. Now, that particular painting, you said that you're very proud of that. Um, can you share a little bit more about that painting? Um, yes. How long did it take you again? And because it's beautifully laid, I think you, there was a part of there where you showed the different um, sections and then the layers when you were putting it, and then the white spaces. I'm also interested to learn more about how you did that. Uh, this one was a little smaller. It's mm -hmm. uh, 12 on 16 inches. Yeah. Uh, and I did it on Winsor & Newton watercolor paper because it's uh, this paper usually allows me to uh, like lift some paint afterwards and create those little lights uh, in the leaves. Mm -hmm. So one tip for you. <laughs> you can uh, like... Uh, plan to lift the color from the beginning uh, so th this is the way you can like have more fun putting the first layers of paint uh, knowing that you would be able to lift uh, lift it if if you need to mm -hmm. uh, and you can also make it even easier uh, to lift uh, if you use uh, a certain medium for watercolor it's called uh, lifting preparation so uh, that was the medium i used here it's like like even more white uh, if you use this before starting to paint mm -hmm. because without this medium you you are able to remove some mistakes and soften the edges and lift some color but it's not always that white and uh, if you like prepare the paper beforehand mm -hmm. uh, it's it makes it much easier so uh, another tip, another tip. Uh, there are some artists who are using masking fluid for those yeah. patches of light in the yeah. leaves uh, but uh, actually i don't do this uh, that often i am more like uh, a fan of a wild first layer of watercolor i am just splashing the paint and see what uh, what will come out of it uh, and then lift the color uh, but uh, actually uh, if you decide to um, use masking fluid you have to like consider softening the edges after removing it to make the uh, similar effects and also the paper uh, must allow you to soften the edges no not all that all of the papers will uh, allow you to do it like hot press papers are not very good for that job agree agree to that that's it. Those are really good tips, um, especially for that painting. And also the one that you mentioned that, you know, wild first layer. I love that term that you use because that's really what watercolors can be very unpredictable, right? And when you just let go of yourself and just, I remember seeing one of your videos and you were just like, wow, she was just layering. They like, you know, yes. colors and they're just layering them onto paper with like different brush strokes. So it's like, Maybe I should do that, and maybe I can come up with the same <laughs> beautiful painting that Kate did. Um, like I said, I have little kids, so I'm not painting that much. Uh, and when I actually sit <laughs> and start to paint, I want to just start, and <laughs> I am not doing uh, a lot of sketch or anything. I just put the paint on the paper and have fun. And then I see where uh, where it uh, gets me and like plan where to put a certain tree or uh, a foreground uh, elements like uh, rocks or something like that. Oh, how old is your kid, by the way? You said, uh, is she here? Is she here? Uh, I have two kids. Uh, my daughter is seven and my son is four year old. Oh, mm. oh, but they are pretty noisy. <laughs> <laughs> full of energy so <laughs> are they into arts as well or are they um, i think so oh maybe it's too early to say but really? I, I think they like to uh, draw and color uh -huh. we speak. i would they are very lucky to have a mom who's very good into painting and drawing um, painting landscapes so must be a very good um you know environment to grow up in 
especially if they are indeed interested in arts. Now, um, yeah, so we talk about those two paintings. I, I did mention that I really love those um, paintings that you did. And there was also one thing that, one other um, video that you posted on, on Instagram, which really caught my attention because one, it, because it was, it was excellently shot. Um, I love the, the effects and how it was captured, capturing, I mean, the shot would capture you as an artist and it showcased, you know, how, what watercolor for you is all about and um, how you define painting in that video. That really caught my attention because you talked about painting like the beginning of a new adventure and when I think about it that is so true because an adventure can be either exciting or a bit scary because you don't know what's going to happen so can you share a little bit more about painting and watercolor and why watercolor to begin with Actually, I um, started more like a, as a pencil artist, uh, and I still like to do it. So uh, watercolor is just my like new way of finding my uh, my way through art. Uh, it gives more uh, opportunities. Uh, we have colors, we have some unexpected effects that can happen uh, and you the, and the fact that you can't uh, really control what watercolor will do is like the fun part of it and uh, exciting part and also a challenge for an artist because in pencil you can like remove the mistakes and try again mm -hmm. uh, unless you do a hole in the paper <laughs> trying to uh, rub things uh, of it uh, but in watercolor uh, people say it's difficult because you like can uh, remove the mistakes that much and makes adjustments and it should be painted in one sitting uh, I don't think all of that, those are true, uh, actually, because uh, with little kids and not much time, I'm very often starting on one day and finishing like a week later, even. Uh, there are many, many uh, works that were uh, waiting for me to finish it for years, and uh, many people will probably uh, throw it to trash because they would think they will never uh, complete and yet uh, those very often become one of my favorites uh, after those years that you had to wait to be finished and for watercolor uh, it's like the most uh, exciting part is when you start when the when you have a white sheet of paper before you and you don't know where the painting will go. Uh, not like with pencil, when you can plan every every step of the way and be sure you will be able to do it. <laughs> uh, with watercolor, you have to like embrace the possibility that uh, you might uh, have to change some steps of uh, that you planned before, uh, and maybe it would look uh, totally different from the image you had in your head. That's uh, that's very very fun part of watercolor for me. I love it. Um, like what I said, I, I love how you defined it um, in that video, and then hearing you talk about the unpredictability of it. And I, you also did mention in one of your posts that when you do paint, it's as if you had a magic in you. Yes, like I, I love that. I love that. magic, <laughs> because white sheet of paper turns into something uh, that's very often like um, telling a story, something uh, that people would love to watch every day on their wall. That's pretty cool thing of being an artist, a cool part of being an artist. Is it magic? It's magical. Um, like, like as you said, seeing an art piece on the wall and something that's always there, um, present and when you look at it it's as if it's taking you to an entirely different place and that's how I feel as well when I look at your landscapes um, uh, seeing those light peeping seeping through um, those branches and different colors uh, the warmth and even the cold um, you can really sense it and I, I think that's also one of the things that you did mention about how you would want your audience to uh, feel when they look at your works. Yes. So um, I will, go ahead, go ahead. 
I would just love uh, for people to feel exactly the same things that I was feeling while painting it. Uh, that's uh, what I think makes uh, a real art when someone viewing your work actually feels something, not just admire your skills, but also uh, like be in, uh, is inspired by the work and feel it makes it makes him feel something good probably <laughs> yes absolutely good um please like what i said um, i already have two favorites from from your works and i'm sure our audience as well um those who have been following your works on socials are pretty much interested to learn more about how you managed to reach to that point um where you're very comfortable like what I said, just dipping in your brush onto the paper. And I think you were using, is that a flat brush or an angle? It's a flat brush. And just dipping it on paper and you were like, it looks like magic. You're absolutely right. You know, just di dipping in the brush onto the uh, water and then paint and just, you know, randomly just brush strokes. I was just so blown away. Now you I did mention, go ahead, go ahead, good. Yeah. Uh, it might be that that I just enjoy the way that paint spreads on the paper and I forget for a minute <laughs> what I want to achieve. I just have uh, fun with it and enjoy the process, no, not stress if I am going to do it right. <laughs> like uh, Maybe it's uh, years of practice probably, uh, but I'm also like trying to get into the right mindset before uh, starting to paint. If I am having a not, not so good day, uh, I will probably destroy the painting. <laughs> so I like, uh, I think I have to believe uh, in my own abilities before I will start at least a bit. Uh, and the most important thing uh, of it is that I am not focusing on the result I want to get uh, too much. I am just enjoying the whole process, the way the paint spreads on the paper and probably the years of practice that uh, came before the painting. Uh, is helpful, um, are helpful, but uh, mostly uh, the mindset that you have before you start to apply paint to the paper uh, helps to be more confident with it. If you are uh, thinking, I, I am not going to make it right, I, I am going to make some mistakes, or uh, like, stop overthinking, clear your head and just have fun with the paint. <laughs> it will probably work out. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. You can always like uh, let it sit for a month or two or uh, what I usually do if I'm not satisfied with some stage of my work uh, and it's pretty uh, often that uh, our works um, don't work uh, as we imagine it. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between the professional artist and the beginner is that a uh, beginner will overthink it and maybe f uh, even throw it away and don't, don't finish it. And the professional, it's not that stressed about the fact that it doesn't uh, look as good as uh, he or she would like yet. He knows uh, he will somehow find a way to make it work. And that's my case, actually. So. Uh, I've learned that it doesn't really matter how I start to paint. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, I will be satisfied with the result, uh, one on, of, on one or the other way. Yeah. Uh, I will find uh, some ideas that will help me uh, to finish this uh, as I wanted it. So that's uh, the main thing I, I think I would... Uh, uh, advice uh, for the beginners to try uh, not tr throw away their works if they are not satisfied just like give it some thought look at it for a week or a month or uh, even put it in your drawer for a year and uh, then take a look after uh, after that time maybe you will have ideas then how to make it work uh, maybe not stick to one technique. If, mm -hmm. if you are completely uh, not satisfied with it, then just experiment. Sometimes if you start in watercolor and finish in uh, like soft pastels or uh, gouache, 
it's it can turn out pretty well. Love those points and techniques and recommendations that you shared, uh, Kate. Um, especially the first one that you said about believing that you are capable. It's this shift in the mindset uh, before you even start painting. I think it really is a major factor um, as how your painting will turn out. And another thing that you mentioned is enjoy the process. Be patient with yourself and just go with the flow. And you know, you're not pressured to finish it but all at the same time. Take some time to think yes. about it and learn a new technique even. So let's talk about teaching because like what I said at the beginning of this episode that I would want to dive into that because you started as an art teacher before you become a full-time artist. So the the heart, in, in your heart, it's always been there, right? That that kick-started your, your career as an artist and you were doing live classes, is that right? On-site classes. And with Escher, you will be doing an online class that's happening on May 22nd at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are listening to this episode, it's probably on Monday, the 23rd, um, whichever time in Eastern. So you will be able to have access to the recording to Kate's um, class, which I'm sure you are all are waiting for. So I'm going to um, hand it over to you, Kate, to talk about um, what the class is going to be and what they can expect out of the class. So uh, this time it won't be trees, uh, but uh, apart from trees, I am very good in painting uh, sunset skies and clouds in my landscape. So this is what we will practice this time. And it's actually one of the funnest subjects to paint when you just uh, are starting out with uh, watercolor because uh, like gives you the opportunity to practice all of the most important uh, techniques and tricks uh, and that's what i am actually going to share with you i am going to uh, teach you how to uh, stretch the paper the easiest possible way so mm, almost no uh, equipment required you just need uh, uh, a sheet of paper that's not in the block but a loose sheet of paper and some water resistant uh, material on your desk mm -hmm. and that's it uh, no, maybe probably uh, a white brush would be useful as well. Uh, and we will paint a very warm and like uh, reddish um, yellow sunset uh, with a black backlit clouds. And to do this correctly, uh, you would have to prepare your paper beforehand. Uh, you will find on the Etcher's website how to do it. Uh, there's a photo of the masking fluid applied uh, to the paper, uh, like how I will have mine prepared. Uh, and you should apply it um, at least um, a half an hour before the workshop, so it's dry before we will put uh, the water and the paint uh, on the paper. Uh, the masking fluid always should be dry uh, before you start. Uh, if you like, you can also use the, the lifting preparation medium, medium that I have mentioned because uh, it also uh, would make uh, softening edges of the cloud easier. Uh, I am not going to do it uh, this time because I, uh, I am going to uh, show you how uh, this paper behaves without it uh, and only mention that uh, it's possible to make it uh, a little easier for yourself. Uh, and then we will uh, just go on having fun with the paint. Like I said, uh, the first layers are always quite wild and that's uh, also the case for uh, this little project we will have. Uh, we will put the first layer uh, of the sky, let it dry a little bit. Uh, but since the paper will be stretched, stretched the way I am going to show you, it will be quite wet. So it won't dry completely. It will be just a little bit less uh, soaking wet when we would start, start to apply a second layer of paint and like make um, the intensity of the color more prominent on some parts uh, than on the others. 
And then when we will be satisfied with how uh, the colors look on the painting, we will remove the masking fluid and I will teach you how to uh, soften the edges and adjust the colors uh, of the uh, almost dry painting and maybe use uh, also some um, cool tools like uh, a tool of toothbrush that I am us usually uh, using to create um, a nice gradient uh, on a, um, a surface that's not totally uh, dry mm -hmm. but I already see I am not uh, happy with the color but I am a little afraid to apply the, uh, another layer with a brush because I might destroy the um, first layer of paint that's when uh, you can use uh, a toothbrush and I will show you how to do it properly uh, and actually, uh, that's that's it. We we will see how it goes uh, on the workshops. That's pretty exciting because it's sunset, and I am a huge fan of uh, watching sunsets. I've seen you paint outdoors, so I'm pretty sure our students um, who subscribe to Etcher are pretty excited to learn about layering, especially the wild first layer. That is very interesting. Um, I would love to see it, how it works and um, how, because clouds can be, for me, it can be a little bit tricky, um, at least for me. So having the techniques and learning from you and how to do it would definitely be a huge help. Um, one other thing that I would like to ask you, Kate, because, you know, it's enough that people sign up for classes, right? And you having taught, like, I would imagine hundreds of students, or even thousands of students um, about watercolor. I, I would imagine that you have encountered several students who would come up to you and say, Kid, it's just so difficult. Um, you know, I'm not progressing. Or there were some who would show up on the first day, but they're not going to show up the next one or the next session. What do you think? Why do you think uh, they behave that way? Or what could be the driving factor as to, you know, why some students would stop at a certain point learning, especially learning about art or watercolor in this case? Well, uh, it's the negative self-talk, I think, uh, for them. And uh, comparing to the artists that already achieved uh, that level they want to achieve. And oh, that's like the most common thing. And I also uh, did compare myself to others. Uh, somehow I managed to stop <laughs> uh, and like have more fun with it mm -hmm. uh, right now and trust that someday I will be at the level I want to be and I am like destined to be maybe even uh, reach my full potential. Uh, I hope everyone will find some or the some way to feel the same way. Uh, and what can help is uh, obviously practicing, uh, watching those videos that uh, from the artists that inspire you, maybe copying uh, their works if you feel uh, comfortable doing it. But then when you copy it, try uh, using the same techniques, but f uh, in totally different subject. Like if uh, an artist paints portraits, try to use the same techniques doing landscapes and stuff like that. This is the way you find your own style uh, by experimenting. You can uh, read a lot of books and maybe find something interesting uh, techniques there as well. I uh, love one book in particular. It co it's called How to Make Watercolor Paint Itself. It's by Nita Engel. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recommend that book uh, because she shares just so much more, uh, so much useful information, not just uh, the unusual techniques, but uh, her insight uh, in watercolor is very, very interesting. And uh, that, that's really one of uh, my influences, actually. Uh, it inspired me to make my landscape so wild uh, and just well, have fun with the paint, uh, just like sh she does. Wow. Uh, so that's that's one of the things, uh, trying to copy, but not too much, uh, yeah. having a sketchbook, but also not uh, 
not like those perfect sketchbook we see everywhere on social media. I don't mean uh, a sketchbook like that, that you uh, start and want to be perfect right away. I, I am f talking about a sketchbook that, that you keep to yourself just to exercise. Uh, yes. Because if you overthink it and want every page to be perfect, it it's just not a very good way to learn. Exactly. Uh, give yourself some freedom to experiment and not always uh, you know, don't always have to share it with uh, with the world those are those are really amazing tips um especially for someone who's starting out and those who find or probably find watercolor a bit frustrating or any type of medium even um it, it takes patience and at the same time like what you said um you can look for influences we can search for um, inspiration but it doesn't necessarily mean that you always have to copy well you can also keep a sketchbook of how you will practice um, and not necessarily share it on social media um, i think that's one of the pressures even um, when you are creating art it's do i really need to showcase it or what if you know I'm, I'm going to be criticized? That comparison game that you mentioned earlier, that really um, will change the way you view your own progress and your art, ultimately. Um, your class, again, is happening on the 22nd. But from what you've shared here on the podcast, I'm sure our students, listeners, um, and longtime supporter of the, pod of the podcast, Make More Art, would really... I'm pretty sure 100% that they have been inspired by your story of how you started. And at the same time, um, the journey that you took um, and being a full-time artist and still continuing to learn and teach what you have been learning um, through your explorations. And now you are very much in love with landscape. So we, I'm sure you will continue to grow and probably share showcase with us other uh, subjects could be more portraits. I've seen some of your works, which are portraits, um, which are also really good. So um, Kate, any other golden nuggets that you would like to share our audience before we wrap up? Yes, there's one more thing that uh, I haven't mentioned actually. Uh, remember that every mistake is actually an opportunity to learn so we should like embrace the possibility that uh, mistakes uh, that we make will make us a better artist one day and maybe that's the last time we make that mistake and the next painting will be our, our masterpiece after uh, many years of uh, exercising like i try to always be grateful for the opportunity to make the mistakes and that's uh, make it a lot easier to not stress too much uh, about the painting process uh, that's uh, also one of the things that make me mm, more chilled out during painting the, the, those first layers because i know if i do mistakes that that's a good a good thing yeah. uh, and a way to learn and make uh, next painting better so yeah, that's that's the golden nugget of it all. Just allow yourself to make mistakes because this is the way to uh, become a better artist. I love that. I, I am a huge advocate of you know taking, trying it out, making mistakes, and then trying it out again. And that's how you get better, just like what you said. Kate, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. All the best with your upcoming workshop this Sunday. Uh, like I said, I'm sure they will learn a lot um, from what you've shared here on the podcast. I learned a lot myself. So thank you for showing support, uh, for teaching with us, and for being part of the show. And I'll speak to you again soon. And let's continue to make more art. Thank you so much, Kate. This episode brought me back to those days when I was so frustrated with watercolor and couldn't seem to get past the ugly face of painting. So many of us have worked so hard to pursue our passion and there are so many commonalities in our stories. Lack of confidence, mistakes, and opinions of other people. But what's beautiful about Kate's story is that all of your circumstances don't need to take the same formula, route, or detours to pursue your passion. In fact, 
a shift in mindset will propel you to start and succeed in your chosen field. Kate's story is so inspiring and empowering, but it's not just her story. It could be yours too. In her words, don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how you learn. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Make More Art Podcast and for supporting the show. Drop us a comment or feedback through the blog post associated with this podcast at atrolab.com slash Kate. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast or you can find us on YouTube at Etro Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.